A question that keeps coming up is how do I open up OAuth tokens after receiving them from my auth provider? I've done a few examples of working with OAuth providers, specifically signing in with Google OAuth. So I'll get right to it. I'll show you guys uh, what all comes back and we'll open those up. If you want to use the timestamps to skip ahead to see how to do this in SvelteKit, then go ahead and use the timestamps to move forward. Otherwise, I'm gonna start with the React and Express version. I have my Express backend running here and I have my React front end running here. So those are both going. Let's go take a look at the source code right away though. Inside of my source code for this, and this is available, I'll leave a link in the description, we have an OAuth route. If you need to know how to set up your Google Developer Console, check the description for that information. I'm not going to get into that. I'm specifically going to focus on the tokens that come back. So we have a Git route. It is the OAuth Git route, and this is the route that receives the response from Google. In my example, I wrote this async function called get user data that actually uses a special URL that Google provides that you can pass the access token and it will open it up for you and give you back some information, the user and whatnot. So let's look at how to open it up with the regular OAuth2 provider SDK. Let's go ahead and comment out this function. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to open up a ticket. To get your ticket, what you need to do is let's make a const ticket. And you just OAuth to client.verifyID token. And what you pass to this function is the ID token. And that's going to be user.id underscore token. That's coming from the credentials that we receive from Google. One of the many things that Google sends back in this credentials, you have an access token, a refresh token, all of your scopes, the token type, and then we also have this ID underscore token. And this is what we're gonna actually verify. So we pass that in to the verify ID token function, and we also need to pass in our audience. This is gonna be your Google Developer Console ID we're using the process.env client underscore ID. Now let's go ahead and console.log this. So you guys can see what it looks like. And with everything running, we'll go sign in with Google. And this is gonna reroute us back to the home page. That's not changed. So what you'll see here is we still have the credentials. That's the access token, refresh token, scope, and all that. But now we have, here's the ticket that we're printing out. Now what your ticket is, is it's all of the information from the ID tokens. The payload is wrapped in an envelope. The envelope just contains what algorithm was used and what kind of token it is. And then you have the actual payload. This is who issued the token, your ID from Google Developer Console, the sub, if you're not familiar with JSON web tokens, this is actually the subject. This is your ID in Google. Then you have your email and whether or not the email was verified. And then all this other information is inside the payload. You can pull it out manually. Otherwise, there is a handy dandy function that the OAuth2 client provides. And you can just do a const payload equals ticket.getPayload. And now the payload here is going to be everything that we've seen in our console.log here inside of payload. So you don't have to manually extract it if you don't want to. So that is how you open up the actual token from Google. Now, what you would do with this and what I do with this is I save the subject because according to Google's documentation, a person's email address could change. So I save all of it. I save the subject in case you need to change an email address, just like Google would do. They would use the subject to update the email address for that subject but I save the subject, I save the email, and then I save obviously the name as well. So what I do is I build a user out of all that information. So from the payload, I do a, a const a user ID, const name, const email. I pull everything out. And then once I have everything, then I build a user and I'll call this app user and then just put all of those things inside of that user. And now I can save this to my database. So in this application, if I wanted to, um, if this was a sign up, I would save user to database. 
if this was a sign in, then you could create a JWT token and a cookie. In this particular example, I'm running the Node.js Express backend on port 3000 and the React front end on port 5173. So you cannot cross origin set a cookie. You can't set a cookie from one origin to another. Um, in order to make that work in this example, you would have to set up a proxy so that all of the traffic appears to be coming from one domain. Let's go take a look at how to do this in SvelteKit. So here is the SvelteKit version. And in this example, we have an OAuth route, just the same as we had in our Express backend. But it's still a Git route. You can see that here, export const git. And in this example, I'm still using that async function that's utilizing the Google uh, special URL that you can pass that access token. We can copy all that other code out of our React version. So let's go ahead and copy all this out. And we can paste that in there comment that one out and then we'll paste this in now the difference here is going to be for this oauth2 client we're not going to be using process.env we're going to be using the secret so svelte.kit handles their private environment variables a little bit different and this would be secret underscore client underscore id uh, otherwise the user is still the same the user dot uh, id underscore token that's still the same we're still pulling that out of credentials the same way there and you can still pull out your payload from the ticket and build your user the same way. Now, let's extend this a little bit further. In this example, in, I'm using SvelteKit, so my front end and back end are running at the same domain, so I don't have to worry about proxying or anything of that nature. So we can go ahead and create a, a token, create a comment here, create JWT token. And I'm gonna const token equals JWT.sign. We're going to pass in the app user, that's right, and secret JWT underscore key, and then expires. This, we don't want this to expire so quickly. Let's say 24 hours. And now let's pull those values in. I don't have uh, JWT in here just yet, so import JWT from JSON web token, and then we need to add our environment variable. So that is correct, secret underscore JWT underscore key. I'm just using a UUID for that. You can use a hash, whatever you're most comfortable with. And then below here, below the where we're creating the token, we can do a cookies.set. And you can call this whatever you like. Um, let, I'll call it token. That's fine. And we'll pass in the token. And then we'll have to set all of these values path and max age a lot of people like to do the math on this you don't have to so you can do like this as a week you want your http only to be true you want to set secure to true and same site to strict let me get rid of this comment and so after we create the token and set the cookie we can save this. So in this felt kit example, it looks a little bit different. I have this sign in button on the sign up page, but if we click that, we'll select the account we want to use and it's going to ping that Git route, pull out the credentials. Then we pull out the ticket, which has the envelope and payload. We create our user um, by stitching together all of the information that we want from the payload. And then in this case, um, I take this one step further and this is how you create a, your own JWT token and put it into your cookies. And now if we go look here in our application under cookies, there's the cookie that we set and we can pull that out and check it inside of our hooks.js file just like you would signing in with username and password. So there is how you open up the tokens coming back from Google. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Share with anyone that you think would find this helpful. Have a great day.